Hey everybody, Brian from Amos Performance, and today we're going to go over the heat exchanger for the A90 Toyota Supra. So this project is pretty straightforward in as much as, you know, the front of the car is pretty full already. A lot of the times if you're going to increase cooling, you're going to increase frontal area of the core and without a significant amount of modification, you can't really do that in the new Supra. So we had a lot of challenges to actually make something that worked better within the constraints we had. So it comes down to volume and efficiency. One of the big things with heat exchangers in general is the fin type and the fin size. So for this one, we went with five millimeter tall fins. It's very efficient and still pretty cost effective. And it gets us a lot of heat rejection for the area that we have to work with. We also made the core deeper. So we have about a 50% increase in core volume and we made the tanks a little bit bigger as well on the side. So we doubled the amount of water that can hold. So what that means is through a pole or coming out of a corner, going down a straight, we're rejecting a little bit more heat, but we're also spreading that out across a little bit more water. So the temperature over time and the recovery rate is a lot better as well. Another thing we did was we went with uh, machined billet end tanks so that we could ensure a really, really perfect fit. Again, there's not a lot of room up there and we don't want you to have to be taking the bumper off, doing all kinds of modifications to get this in. It installs very quickly, very easily without modifying any parts. And that's because we have a lot of small features on this product that allow you to slide right in and work with all the factory components nearby. So we did a lot of testing with this, a lot of water in and out of the core, out of the intercooler. The actual water system itself is a little bit more complicated and we're seeing, you know, crossover to the AC system and how that works, how that influences it. So we have a lot of temperature data from the dyno. And of course, we put this on Jackie Ding's time attack car, got a lot of real world data on the road course, as well as on the drag cars that are going down the strip to see exactly how this is performing and what changes needed to be made. We actually went through a couple different main cores before we arrived at this one because of how efficient you have to be to make a competitive and high performing piece. Another thing we did is we worked with our fabrication department when we designed this and they are extremely happy with the way this welds. And what that means for you is that these are extremely consistent parts. These guys have a really straightforward, easy time welding them because we spent the time up front to make sure that the thicknesses between the header plates, between the billet, the materials, all match so they weld together really well there's not a lot of adjusting which means it's easier for us to have product on the shelf and we can know that these fit perfectly square and they're re repeatable core to core so that you can always be sure that when you buy it and put it in you'll have perfect factory fit for more data and video check us out at amsperformance.com of course our social on facebook and instagram and our new vlogs on youtube thanks for watching